Over the course of the next two videos, I'm going to show you how I created this image of a crested gecko named Shade. Hello, my name is Stuart Wood and welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, then click the subscribe button so you don't miss any free content. Over the course of two videos, this video and the next one, I'm going to show you how I created this image of a crested gecko named Shade. This gecko is my wife's gecko and it is a family pet. Now the one thing I know that I want to do with the crested gecko is I don't want to use the trim macro flashlight and blast light into his eyes because his eyes are more sensitive than the uh, spider's eyes. So we're going to be using the studio light and I'm going to set it uh, a little bit further back so that it's less of an impact. Anyway, enough of me blabbering on about it. Let's go on to the photo shoot. So to start with this shoot, we need to set up the scene. The idea I have is the gecko being on a piece of cork bark lit by a blue, an orange light, and then a field light in the front. And I'm thinking for this, I'm going to use a black background. I normally don't use black backgrounds, but for this one, I think it should work. So the first thing we've got to do is set up the background. And we can hit two birds with one stone using this neat little gizmo. This is a light tent. And if I open it up, so what we have just there is a nice little light tent to put our gecko into. So that's our light tent set up and that's why I'm on this side of the frame because it does take up a lot of room. But it has a diffused side. So when we put our lights this side, it's gonna diffuse the light that's gonna come into our subject. Now these come with different coloured backgrounds and they have velcro on that you can just uh, attach to a light tent. For this shoot I'm going to be using a black background. So next I need to introduce the cork bark. So I have a, uh, a piece of cork bark here. Just uh, You can get it from any uh, reptile shop or pet shop in game from there and I'm going to use my lens cup to hold it up and I want some separation from the background because the background is creased because it is a, a felt background it's a, a fabric and it's got creases where you fold it and I don't want those showing up if I can help it so next I need to bring in the uh, the camera because I have to figure out what magnification we're going to use like I said we're going to be using the we're going to be shooting a headshot so I'm going to be using this piece of cotton wool, which is roughly the size of his head and his neck. I'm going to place that onto the cork bark where I'm hoping, fingers crossed, the gecko will um, sit. So I'm going to bring in the, uh, the tripod now. So we have our tripod. And I'm just going to clip my camera onto it. I'm going to frame this up. Now I know that this 50mm without extension tubes is not going to do the job. However, I'm just going to show you the field of view you get from it without extension tubes. So that if you're doing this for the first time, you can see how a, uh, an image gets put together. Okay. Now I'm just going to flip my screen out so as I can actually see. This is one of the reasons I love the Canon flip out screen is you can just maneuver it to any position. So that's the area of field that we have with just the 50 mil. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the smallest filter on here, which is the 13 millimeter extension tube. And we'll see what we get from that. So I've got the 13 mil on there now, and this is our area of field of view. And I think that is a lot better than what the, uh, the previous one was without the uh, extension tube. So I believe we're going to go with that for this shoot. So that is the 50mm 1.8. That's the version 2. It's not the STM. You can tell by the horrible focusing ring which version it is. And we have the 13mm extension tube on my Canon 650D. So I have two lights, these are the new ear uh, LED light panels, I have them on my tripods, okay. 
I'm going to set these up either side. We're going to be doing a kind of a three-point light setup on this uh, on this shoot. Go. So let's start with this side. And as you can see, you can see from the uh, the picture how it's lighting up the uh, right side of the image. Let's turn on the other one, and then we have that one on the left side. These are at fifty percent power, and they have not been coloured yet. So you can see how we're starting to build up the scene for our um, gecko. Because as I said before, I don't want the gecko out while we're setting things up. Now let's colourise these uh, these lights. So I have some um, gels here. This gel came with the light. This is a gel pack I bought off Amazon. Check in the description for the links if you want any of this equipment. And I'm just going to place that on there. And then I'll put the blue one on this one. And you can see how that has cha now changed the, uh, the lighting in our scene. I want to increase the orange. I want the orange to be more dominant than the blue. All right, so I'm happy with that. We have a fill light behind me, which is going to fill in uh, the front. And uh, I think we're almost ready to start taking some pictures. So what I'm going to do for the uh, the pitch part is I'm going to be using wireless remotes. And this wireless remote will connect to my shutter. Shutter release uh, cable just here. And it will allow me to take the picture without touching the camera. On top of that, I have my transmitter for the light that's behind me. Now when I press this trigger, the camera should take a picture and our foreground fill light should go off. There we go. And what I want to do is lower the shutter speed until we start seeing the, uh, the effect of the uh, light on our subject. And you can see there it's too bright. We're losing the light from these two guys. So I'm going to turn them up. I'm going to put this one to 75 and the orange one to 100% power. Let's take another picture. Okay. So what we need to do now is to increase our shutter speed until we get the desired lighting. The fill light is too close. I'm going to back it up a bit. So I've now backed off the uh, the fill light and I'm pointing it towards the ceiling so it's bouncing off the ceiling and down onto our subject. That's better. That is much better. So it's time now to bring in our subject. So we have shade here. We don't know if he's a male or female yet. And I'm going to place shade onto the back end, just here, of our core park. And hopefully he's going to climb up and present himself where we want him to be. Okay, so the hardest part here is going to be getting the focusing, because I want the focusing directly on his eye, and we don't know exactly where he's going to stop. Now, I have a camera set to manual focus, but... Um, all I can suggest when you're in this type of situation is patience. Patience is the most important thing. We could be going for half an hour trying to get the shot we want. Okay, but so long as you get the shot, it doesn't matter how long it takes. Now let's get shade now. There we go. And I'm going to place him on the back. There we go. Okay, the focus is right on his eye. And we're going to take a picture. Not bad, not bad at all. Not bad for a start. Okay, now he's leaning forward a little bit, which I don't really know if I want to do that. But what I've got to do now is I've got to put shade back where we want to. So I'm just waiting on shade to get into the position that I want him in. 
So while we're doing this, I'm going to lower my shutter speed. I want more of the orange and blue light coming in. Okay, I'm just going to move that light. There we go. So I've just repositioned the camera. Very micro adjustments. And I'm turning the cup to try and get the angle that I want of him. Ideally, I want him on this piece here. Like that, coming up the opposite way to what he's doing. I'm going to have to reposition him. I'm just taking different shots while he's in place with different shutter speeds. That way if there's any issues we've got some other pictures that we can use like a dark background. I'm going to also increase my f-stop to 7.1. Drop it down, back down to 1 50th of a second. A little bit too dark, unfortunately. So it appears that the shade has settled down, which will enable me to reposition my camera. And hopefully slow down a little bit. Ideally, I want the tip of his nose in focus as well. So we're going to increase the f-stop. We're going to go to 7.1. We're going to drop the short speed. I'm now at 1 25th of a second. Hence why you need a tripod. Right, so now we've done those images, I'm going to put on another extension tube, see if we can get just a little bit closer. So for this last segment, I've switched up to a 21mm extension tube. And let's see if Shade is going to play for us again. Now I'm going to move my foreground light a little bit closer. And what I want to do is just coat shade back up to the top of his little cork bark. So he's peering, he's just peering over the top of the cork bark at the moment. And I think that's going to be it because he wants to jump and go again. So I'm going to put Shade back in his cage again and I think we'll call it a, a day for this photo shoot. I think for the first one with Shade it's been a pretty good uh, photo shoot. So that's it for the photography side of this photo shoot with Shade. Now the, uh, the actual shoot took longer than what the video shows because I had to put him back into the cage in a couple of times because I didn't want to disturb him too much. We only handle Shade for about five minutes at a time. Anyway. Now that you got to the end of the video, I want to thank you for getting to the end of the video and I want to remind you that I do have a Facebook group called The Macro World where you can post your macro images into this uh, group and not be afraid of bullies coming in and saying things about you, which um, some of us in there have experience in different groups. This group is not like that, okay? It's a very safe environment. So you can get your images critiqued by myself and other members of the group and you can feel in complete safety because we are all friends in that group. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, if possible, give it a share out to social media to anybody you think would enjoy it. But for now, my name is Stuart Wood. I want to thank you for getting to the end of the video. And as always, guys, I'll see you on the next video for the editing process of these gecko images. See you later.